First question is from Darby Jane. What would you recommend for someone his, who is going from tracking everything to eating intuitively? You know, this is actually a, a pretty tough transition. So there's several transitions that you make when you're trying to get a hold of your nutrition, right? You go from, number one, being pretty unaware of what's in food, um, calories, proteins, uh, fats, carbohydrates, how it affects you. So the first step really is to start tracking, right? You're tracking, you figure out macro goals, you figure out calorie goals, and you start to eat according to those goals to accomplish body composition um, you know, goals or just to feel a particular way. So that's a pretty tough transition <laughs> right there, right? Going from just eating whatever to tracking and aiming for certain targets. Now, the next tough transition is to go off of tracking because – you don't want to track for the rest of your life. That's a very, that can definitely develop into a poor relationship with food. You're stressed about what you got to eat and how you're going to hit your targets. It's just and neurotic. It can become very neurotic. We see this a lot in the in the fitness and health space. So long term, ultimately, the place you want to be is you want to be able to eat healthy, but you also want to be relaxed about it. You know, you don't want it to be a stress where you're constantly aiming for targets and hyper aware of every single thing that you you put in your mouth. You want it to be more of a relaxed state. So that's what intuitive eating is. So to go from tracking to intuitive is another hard transition. I would argue it's a harder transition and it takes a little longer. So here's a couple strategies. One, start to pay attention to um, how, body signals that have nothing to do with body fat percentage, weight, uh, or muscle. So digestion, skin, um, energy levels, uh, start to pay attention to mood shifts. I notice when I'm stressed, I tend to aim for these kinds of foods. When I eat these kinds of foods, I feel better or I feel worse or I feel tired. Start to pay attention to those kinds of things. Start to make connections. And then the next step is to slowly come off of tracking. And, and that looks like, you know, here's an easy example. You track seven days a week hit targets. Now you're going to do it six days a week and you make one day intuitive. Um, and then when that gets comfortable, because what will end up happening is at first it'll look like a, an off day, right? It'll, uh, this is intuitive and it turns into like you, you eat more or you go crazy or whatever. Get to the point where that day feels comfortable, then add another day, then add another day. And eventually you're seven days a week eating intuitive. It usually doesn't look linear. It usually looks like you go one, two, three days and then find that you got to track again mm. and then you go back and then back and forth. But over time, it'll it'll turn into where you're not tracking. Are you saying all that? You, time. So so I I have them pay attention to all those like you know your stool, your hair, your sleep, yeah. your energy before you stop tracking. Correct. Yeah. So I want I mean I want you to kind of start to make that connect because if if all you've been doing is is measuring, weighing, and tracking calories, and then your weight probably or looking at your yourself in the mirror, if that's all you've been doing for a really long time, it's really hard to make that just that leap to now I'm also an intuitive eating with, if you haven't yet made the connection to when you're eating this way, when you're, when you're hitting your targets, how do you feel all in the other categories? Yeah, you have to, because otherwise it's your, what ends up happening is you go from not tracking. This is what I've seen with people. They'll go from not tracking to still kind of tracking. So they'll go, Oh, this is intuitive, but they're still eating the same way they did before, mm. or they're mentally keeping track of their macros. Because at that point, all they're paying attention to is, Body fat percentage, my body weight, uh, calories, proteins, fats, and carbs. So you have to start to make all those other connections because yeah. that's what it's about. Well, right? isn't the the difficulty is that you're putting all of the responsibility on what's written out in terms of like I I I know that my schedule is this, and so now like they're mindlessly sort of just taking that and then going and finding the food and applying it into the formula. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it too be beneficial to try and mimic exactly what they've been doing for a while, but not you know looking at their sheet and weighing and measuring. Well, I also think that it's, so I think the people that, so obviously anybody who's been tracking and hitting their targets really well, they can give you a generic response of, oh, I, I, of course I feel better. Well, of course you do, because you're probably eating in yeah. a, a, either a maintenance or a calorie deficit. You're getting enough adequate protein, but it, it's got to be even further than that. Like you have to like start to pick apart like days that you have Oh, like this day I had, you know, a bunch more fiber and this is what happened. Correct. Or this day I right. had, you know, less protein and I noticed my digestion was better. It's not, oh, I, I when I hit my targets, macronutrients, I feel great. I sleep good. I, I my everything feels good. So then I'm trying to hit that again. You're still not really 
learning how to look at what's in the day and how each of those of those decisions are affecting all the things we're talking about. You have to start to unpack that first, in my opinion. Totally. It can't be as generic as when I'm hitting all my my targets, I feel great. You know, like this just general umbrella of like, I feel good. Totally. Because it, intuitive eating involves sometimes eating foods that are not on the menu, eating foods that might be physiologically unhealthy, like cake or cookies or pizza. But the intuitive aspect is I'm with my friends. I'm enjoying myself. We're connecting right now. It doesn't feel like a cheat day because it's all yeah. one diet. Um, so you have to connect uh, all those signals. You can't just go into it with you know proteins, fats, carbs, calories. Right. General feeling good. You have to kind of understand, and it's it is a slow process. Look, it's it's okay. Here's a good comparison. It's like you're learning how to dance. And when you first learn how to dance, you're counting your steps, one and two, and then step back and three. You have to keep track. You have to keep count and keep track and keep count. But you can't always dance that way, right? You'll never really be a good dancer if you're always counting your steps. That's the equivalent of counting your macros and hitting mm -hmm. your macros. At some point, you just dance to the music and it becomes- freestyle. And you enjoy it. And then you can move with your partner and then the music can change a little bit and then you can move with the music. And that's what intuitive eating- feels like and now you also got to be patient because if you're like most people you've never uh really ate in a way that uh paid attention to other than things other than what tastes good and what do i crave that's how most people make their decisions so it's not like you've been eating that way for 20 years and then all of a sudden i'm going to track and eat intuitively it's going to take me three months this is a process that takes a little bit of time it takes practice and you'll probably have to revisit tracking on and off uh, throughout this process over and over again. Well, yeah, because every time yeah. you're, you're, you're tweaking it every time, right? Yeah. So like part of the transition looks like, like I was alluding to with the protein, like, oh, uh, and let's say for my, so my body, like roughly 200 grams of protein is ideal for me, like right around mm -hmm. there, right? So um, I notice because I've gone back to tracking, right? I've, I've pushed as low as 130 grams or lower, okay, in protein. And then I've had days where I've pushed beyond 250 grams. And I notice a dramatic difference. When I'm below 130 consistently, I'm just not building muscle. In fact, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm almost losing some muscle if I consistently hit under 130, like day after day after day. When I push beyond 250 consistently day after day after day, I notice it might, it's a little bit harder for my body to digest. And so there's this kind of sweet spot of where I want to land. So I've had to go back and track to kind of know what that feels like. What is exactly. a day, what is a day, a high day of like lots of protein look like for me? What's a low day? And then the same thing goes for fiber. Uh, what what happens when I'm like under 20 grams of fiber for the day? I can tell that my stool is off. What I can tell when I'm between 30 and 80, my stool is perfect. When I go beyond 80, I notice that my stool is loose and it's like weird, right? So like, and you have to go back to tracking each one of those things to kind of get a feel of it. And then you're going, what does that look like on a plate and in three or four meals through the day? So there's a, the, intuitive eating is a long process and I know we've talked about it. But it's the it's the pinnacle. It's the ultimate goal. It's just like programming and training. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't even mm -hmm. think it's a goal. I think uh, because you don't get there. It's like saying my goal is to. It's like when people say yeah, that's a good point because I still go back and track all the time. That's what I mean. It's like saying oh, um, you know, after I get in shape, you know, you'd have clients say this. Well, after I build muscle and get lean, then I then what happens if I stop working out? Mm -hmm. Well, you just go back just to what you keep working out. Yeah, where you were before. <laughs> so. Really, if, if I could define intuitive eating, it's this. It's eating in a way that is healthy, generally healthy, in many, many different ways, both emotionally, physically, psychologically, that is also relaxed. It's not stressing you out because when you get stuck in the counting of calories and macros, hmm. it starts to become a stress. It starts to become unhealthy. You could have perfect eating and it still be unhealthy eating because you're obsessed with it. Well, that's what I would notice a lot of times is is it's the by all means necessary sort of approach where they you know this keeps my weight at this amount and and this is where I need to stay yeah. and it's like a this hysteria over that versus really paying attention to what foods are benefiting you the most, what's helping your digestion, you know, what may be inflammatory that you're just masking over because like by all means necessary I need to stay here uh so just kind of like paying more attention to all those signs.